being recorded. Welcome to the June 24th edition of Midday at the Oasis. I am Kay Deeney, the Educational Services Coordinator, and this month we're going to be focusing on NLM. In May, just before the MLA annual meeting, NLM sponsored a symposium called Voyaging to the Future. And so we're going to have two people who attended and participated in that symposium on our call today. And I just want to let you know that I we did put together a PowerPoint of a few significant um, slides of information, and I'm just going to show you those. And we're also going to show you a six-minute video from the symposium, which hopefully will work okay. Um, when I tested it before, usually it came through quite well. If you have a really slow connection, it's something that you might have to view yourself later, but the sound quality seems to be fine. So, Just to let you know that uh, they intersperse the symposium with short little videos every so often, and they seem to be quite effective. They also set up a blog for Voyaging to the Future, which Naomi's going to tell us more about in a little bit. And so here I have kind of a list of all the significant URLs, and we will be posting this PowerPoint on the website for the Midday Archives. So now I'm going to go ahead and, without further ado, try to launch the video and hopefully it will work fine. systems that could understand medical meaning is an idea that Don Lindbergh came to the National Library of Medicine with in 1984. AI rules. Snow med. PubMed Central. One of the first things we had to solve with IAMS was how you could knit together separate email systems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine worrying about that in a post-internet world? The Library of Medicine is, is really an international library. Most of the information we bring is, from, is published outside the United States. NLM is the place to go. I go there myself many times a day. Five books. They were extremely important. There wasn't anything that you could do or put in a budget that didn't have to cite one of the points in those five books. The most underutilized resource in healthcare today is the engaged patient. As you pass from the, uh, the scientists and the doctor to patients, families, and the public, the latter three groups really want to improve their understanding of some situation. Much credit to NLM for making sure that when you did jump onto the internet and you asked the question, you got the answer in a fashion that was readily understood uh, by the average person who's asking that question. That's not trivial. We started with the librarian. The librarian is the key. 
One of the big issues is organizing the disaster information, which is a very diverse, uh, very disparate uh, body of information. Hey, how are you on Medline searches? Medline become very helpful. Medline Plus. Mobile Medline Plus. For the Medline Plus magazine. What he was envisioning 30 years ago is just now taking place in terms of the use of computers in, in clinical care. PubMed and DocLine and Medline Plus. Clinicaltrials.gov. Unified Medical Language System. Oh, I think UMLS clearly filled a void. And you wisely said this is a language problem, and even more wisely, and, and a benefit to me, is you decided you need a language <laughs> to, to actually do this work. That's just exactly what we needed. Exactly. We are actually in the future that the UMLS was designed to help. It's quite human in our attempt to simplify things to bifurcate things. So we say it's this or that. We say it's bricks and mortar or the digital library. And I'm here to tell you it's bricks and mortar and the digital library. Telemedicine, GenBank, the Visible Human Project. I recall the conversations about the Visible Human Project were the concern that you voiced that we would have uh, anti-visisectionists yeah. camping out on the lawn yeah. um, uh, because the National Library of Medicine was uh, slicing up uh, cadavers. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, none of that ever materialized. The images are exquisite. I mean, unbelievable that this is available for free. It's the most beautiful, beautiful detail. Every day, people download me, download me. It, it, it's starting to hurt in part. I'm a fan of uh, these shows on History of Medicine Division. They've done a great job. I love the exhibit. It's great. It's great interactions. You can show how things are identified spectroscopically and under the microscope. Hokulea symbol for the pride and integrity of Native Hawaiians. In all of this, the message is individuals make a difference. Don, I want to congratulate you for always your talented ability to communicate and all your team as well. The information are actual. This represents uh, an adjunct that will help both physicians and patients going forward into this new millennium. Disaster information. Profiles in science. So it is not just about science. It's about being a scientist in the human world. I think the National Library of Medicine is an incredible creation. We're really lucky that we have something like that in the United States. The National Library of Medicine has been a critical funder in our development of health map and other technologies that support public health efforts. The National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI. The friends of the National Library of Medicine. During your tenure, you have really expanded its activity beyond anything that we had any vision of for the library. It's really right. extraordinary. It's a great place. Great people. So doesn't that make you want to applaud at that point? Let me set up. So that was the beginning of a little over six and a half hours of the symposium that is recorded and available for anyone to view. So with that, I'd like to see Broering, who attended the symposium and is going to give us some information about it. So Naomi, do you see where your arrows are for navigating? And you can unmute yourself with star six. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes, great. Okay. Well, I was there, and I called it a fabulous day at NLM because it was so exciting. 
uh, all all the big guys were there, uh, all the leaders, uh, you know, the leadership that we all know, and it was just so great to be on the ground after I went through security and they went through my car and all that. But um, uh, I wanted you to know that the program that was put on um, that day was really a symposium and it was sponsored, you see here, by the National Library of Medicine, the Friends of NLM, and the MLA. And so Carla and I and a few others and some of the Friends members uh, played a role in um, participating and the word of the day was collaboration in collaborating with NLM to bring this program together. Um, the purpose of the program really was uh, to review the developments and services that were influenced by NLM's long-range plan uh, several years ago and then take some initial steps towards the next NLM long-range plan. And by the way, uh, since I'm mentioning this, I do have a copy of the old long-range plan and I sent a copy of the um, a program that was that took place on the 14th to the PSR folks, so they do have a copy of it in case you want it. Uh, the welcome speakers were uh, Dr. Evans, the Board of Regents Chair, uh, Glenn Campbell from the Chairman of the Friends of the National Library of Me Medicine, and Dixie Jones. And um, as I mentioned before, the, the message of the day was collaboration going from passive to active. Some of the words were print, going from print to online, the importance of technology, and that the NLM serves the world. The first speaker was Donald Lindbergh, and he was introduced by Eugenie Prime, and you saw her on the six-minute video. Donald Lindbergh um, feels very, very, um, uh, adamant about having the users get involved in the long-range plan and having and the, the fact that the NLM is an institution to sell, serve the users and to plan with the leadership on what needs to be done. So I thought that was came through very well. Here's a, the front page of the charting a course for the 21st century. It was the original plan that was developed in 2006 for 30 years and, and well, 20 years, and that's what we are working under now. And so in 2016, they will be going ahead with the new plan, and they will be putting together a long-range planning committee. The panels, uh, there were about a dozen of them, and they all had sort of a, uh, a theme. The first one, uh, seeing ge uh, genetic sequence database at the na as a natural fit for the National Library of Medicine, was um, uh, chaired and um, uh, formed by um, Dr. Macy's and Dr. Bourne. And they both spoke about pumping data and the importance of NL that NLM would have in the future. Dr. Bourne stressed the arrival of big data that you, of course, have all been hearing about and its impact on collaboration, not only amongst us, but with the private sector as well. The next panel was on, expand, uh, on expanding, uh, raising the floor, and it was really called uh, uh, expanding the workforce for the future. And this was really great because a lot of the people that had been in training programs were the presenters, people like um, Joyce Bacchus, who was a library intern, and Joyce Mitchell, who was in the informatics program, and Jim Cimino. And they've all grown up now to really big, important um, places in their career, and they emphasized how much uh, these uh, training programs meant to them and how it emphasized their future. Um, Dr. Machado, who leads the biomedic medical informatics program at UCSD, stressed also in her presentation the importance of excellence in the faculty and excellence in the trainees that we bring together for these programs. 
The next session, Funding Informatics Research and Development, was kind of led by some of the nursing groups and the medical groups that got into uh, nursing informatics and medical informatics. And Suzanne Bacchus spoke about the important role that that has played uh, in their future and also the, the role of development of the visible human with Michael Ackerman um, leading that discussion. That was really exciting to see, you know, what has happened, <clears throat> excuse me, and what is still happening. <clears throat> Funding informatics was critical. Um, once again, the nursing informatics people were involved in that. Uh, building new informatics and R&D resources this is where the um, high-performance computing uh, and communication system got its start in some of the programs that were uh, developed at that time through the, um, through the funding from the National Library of Medicine, as well as the visible and all the imaging uh, uh, programs that came on board. And you know about the uh, long-distance um, uh, health care through uh, images. So then on the high panel on high performance computing, that was really, uh, their theme was really open science and open access and open literature and supercomputers, the birth of the supercomputers and uh, Corporation of National Research. And that was, I remember when we were talking about high performance computing in libraries, so that was a really critical panel. Then came the session on access to published literature. And I'm going to leave that for Gail Yacote because uh, she she's, was on that panel and she can fill you in on that. One of the exciting panels that came next was the clinicaltrials.gov. It was about advancing patient access, science, and public uh, policy. The thing that was most striking about this program was Dr. Catherine DeAngelis, who was the former editor of JAMA, who spoke on the importance of registering clinical trials. And the, the editors of many of the medical journals have gone together and come up with an agreement that they will not publish a clinical trial in their journals unless it has officially been registered in the NIH clinical trials. And that gives us uh, uh, a lot of comfort in knowing that uh, some of those clinical trials that are coming before you have been approved and not just fly-by-night or pharma trials that didn't go through the clinical trial registry. Uh, then getting towards the end of it was the importance of information for patients, families, and the public. And this was led by... Um, some of the folks from the National Library of Medicine and the Specialized Information Services Group. Uh, Gail Dutra spoke about some of the outreach programs that they have been funding uh, through their program. As, and um, uh, that, of course, was very critical to the next project, which was outreach partnerships. Our, outreach par partnerships is where we finally came into the act because they did talk about the National Network of Libraries of Medicine and its regional uh, library role. And thanks to some of the presenters on that panel, like, um, her name is escaping me right now, uh, uh, Mary Ryan was one of the speakers that talked about the importance of the regional programs uh, in the Southwest areas and, of course, throughout the country. So this is where the librarians came to shine. And then uh, ensuring uninterrupted service was one of the uh, reflections uh, that was brought up by Renee Beauregard, and she emphasized the National Network of Libraries. And Dr. Phillips, Stephen Phillips from the SIS, spoke about the efforts of the NLM to serve users. And of course, as you all know, that is our theme. Um, then lastly was the reflections on NLM and its contributions 
over the past 30 years and the opportunities for the future. So getting to the opportunities for the future, I want to emphasize to you that NLM has a blog, and the URL is on this slide, and you can respond to it, uh, anything about the past, the present, or the future that you may feel that is important. And of course, being members of the NNLM, you've also received the call from them to participate. I think theirs has a deadline of this Friday. So it's important to uh, play a role in this uh, and not get left behind. Um, I'll bring that up again. What we're trying to do is really emphasize the role of the librarians. And I think it's really critical for us to get involved and make sure that we get our two cents worth in there, the things that we want uh, to equip our libraries, to bring uh, systems that are available, educational systems available for us, to stress education. That was one of the things they sort of forgot in the presentation. And uh, someone thanked me for making a comment at the end about that. So I, I want to encourage you all to do that. Um, and this is a great, really great, great opportunity for us. So thank you so much. Did I use up all my time? Oh, no, you're fine, Naomi. That's great. So um, I'll, I'll take any questions, or we can just move on to the next speaker. Yeah, we can probably take questions at the end, so that's fine. So our next speaker is Gail Ucote. And I'll just let the, the PowerPoint load. The, the, the voyage to the future slide. So, so uh, go ahead, Gail. If you need to unmute your phone with star six. Hello. Hi. Yes. I don't. I don't have any uh, PowerPoint slides yeah. because I want to focus on some of the themes that were talked about. So it's wonderful that PSRML is sponsoring this opportunity for us to participate in a discussion regarding NLM's future. That is honoring NLM's past achievements, which are the foundations to biomedical information that make possible informed healthcare decisions, whether by a clinician, researcher, student, consumer, or patient. Naomi has done a masterful job in reviewing the key points presented by the biomedical informatics community and the salient content regarding NLM's roles and successes in creating and disseminating quality consumer health information, disaster planning issues and options, and standardized clinical trials information. <clears throat> I'm going to focus on the major themes which the librarian speakers covered. So these are the talks by Elaine Martin and Mary Ryan and myself. One major theme was NLM's critical role in supporting the infrastructure for biomedical information. NLM must continue to support activities which link the health information seeker to quality resources that reflect the best evidence available in the biomedical literature and data sets. Discoverability and use of research data teaching and learning objects, as well as permanent and persistent public access to biomedical information. Both the literature and data remain essential parts of NLM's future operations. A key question will be how can NLM continue to play an essential infrastructure role despite the number of environmental factors associated with the political landscape of policies such as open access emerging technologies, and the need for data standards. Another theme was non-traditional activities for health sciences librarians. Librarians need no longer be tethered to a library building. Rather, their activities take them into offices, labs, hospital floors, and other locations in addressing the faculty, staff, student, and consumer biomedical information needs. New services associated with data planning, disaster planning, data services, informatics, 
and consumer health are examples of key areas ripe for librarian engagement with his or her primary constituency in different ways. For librarians to be successful in these new roles, NLM must continue to support training opportunities for a range of expertise and skills. Those opportunities will vary from health sciences library director to that to disaster planning information specialists, con to consumer health information specialists, and lastly to biomedical informaticians. For NLM to continue to be a major contributor to the biomedical information community, new and existing partnerships with stakeholders from the academic, medical enterprise, and governmental sectors will be necessary. Different combinations of partners may be important to NLM's success in the future. <coughs> Lastly, promotion or outreach to health sciences communities of researchers, clinicians, students, librarians, consumers, and others will continue to be needed. The marketing strategies used to, inform, to ensure that informed healthcare decisions remain a high priority will vary based on the political climate and sensitivities to the idiosyncrasies of each target audience. In summary, the themes of infrastructure, partnerships, outreach and training for librarians or biomedical information specialists and managers will continue to need NLM's strong support. What those activities will look like and how many activities are needed for NLM to perform successfully will require flexible and iterative processes as well as input from all stakeholders, including those of you who are on this session today. At this time, I'd like to open the session for comments and questions that could serve as input to shaping NLM's future, including ideas for the next RML contract. So, Kay, over to you. Thanks, Neil. And I just want to point out that Lori put in the chat box the URL about the recommendation that the publishers made, uh, the ICMJE Organization of Publishers, that recommended that clinical trials be um, registered before they can be printed up in a particular journal. So if you'd like to make a comment, we'd like you to uh, do star six, and then we'll be able to hear you and you can start talking. I, usually if I unmute all of you, we get a lot of noise. So I'm going to let you guys unmute yourself. Otherwise, if you want to put a comment in the chat box, that would be fine. But otherwise, you can do star six, and then we'll we'll try and uh, keep things under control. So, do you have any questions for <coughs> Gail or Naomi? Hey, it's Alan. I just wonder if I could make a few additional remarks at this time. Sure, that would be fine. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank Naomi and Gail very much for their presentation. Uh, the symposium sounds like a really great event, and I'm sorry I wasn't there to witness it, although I, I plan to watch the, the six hours of video recording at some point. So it's it's. Uh, interesting that uh, coincidentally there's two planning processes kind of going on at the same time. NLM is making plans for its next long-range plan, uh, which will begin in 2016, and then also we're looking at some long-range planning for the NNLM contracts as well, specifically the next five-year contract that would run from 2016 to 2021. And I'm sure by now you all know that for the first time ever, NLM issued a request for information to gather feedback about the NNLM program and is very interested in hearing comments. So the RFI is directed at the entire U.S. citizenry, but NLM is especially interested in feedback from people who are familiar with the program or who have worked with the program. If you access the RFI, you'll find that there are 10 guiding questions. 
You can answer as many or as few of the questions as you wish, or you can make any other relevant comments. So I really would encourage all of you to take the opportunity to respond to the RFI. You have a little less than 48 hours to do so. The deadline is noon Thursday Pacific time. And the first guiding question in particular is something that I think you all could respond to. It asks you to make recommendations for priorities for the NNLM program. And it's a good chance for all of you to reflect on what we do and what's important to you. Is it DocLine? Is it educational sessions like this? Is it outreach funding? Or is it other aspects of the program? So I think everybody could uh, list priorities and respond to that first question, and perhaps other questions as well. And I'll stop at this point. So Ellen, that's Thursday, June 26th at noon time? Our time. Noon Pacific time. OK. Uh, this is Naomi. Uh, Alan, I started working on that, and it said something it's strange because it came out almost like a contract, and it said that you had to have a NAICS code. Is that absolutely important? Because I don't know if we have that NAICS code. N-A-I-C-S? I'm I can not sure I, I know what, um, what you mean. And you mean in order to submit a response? Yeah, the RFI, it, did, it, it had two NAICS codes. Okay, listen, what I'll do is talk to you privately about that. I started working on mine, but I didn't finish it. One thing you, you do need to do when you send your responses, you send them to Justin and Wynn at, at the National Library of Medicine. One thing you do need to do is put the RFI number in the subject line. Yes, okay. Yes. That's, that's the only stipulation that I know of. OK. And at Gail's suggestion, I did um, create slides that talked about Elaine Martin's presentation. So I can show you those. that talked about PubMed, the visible human, the UMLS, and Medline in the 90s, pretty much. And it talked about the effects of libraries and librarians and some of the things like um, and he's recommending in some ways for the future of the library, the whole idea of the librarian leaving the library and not being tied down to a desk or our office. And also the librarian as trainer, and um, promoting direct access to all. In addition, there were some other things in the 2000s where PubMed, um, not PubMed, sorry, NLM kind of expanded PubMed Central, got more heavily involved in the biomedical informatics, such as the Woods Hole course that now is going to be in Georgia. Link out the, the OSL leadership training program and how some of those useful things have impacted libraries over the years. And also some of the aspects are looking at the library as a, a space separate from what it has been before in some ways as more of a warehouse. And some of the future comments she mentioned have to do with data, which is a big issue nowadays, with data deluge off of the cover of the Ex Economist and digital libraries with this public health network, and also partnerships, of course, which libraries are often very heavily involved in in one way or another. Gail, do you have any comments to add to that from what Elaine was saying? 
Uh, no, not really. But I was the purpose of these slides was, is to remind people of what are some of the things that NLM has done in the past and is currently supporting. I had sent a chat note saying if any of you have an example of how you think a particular service or uh, a funding source through the RML because of an outreach grant uh, is important to you to continue, then those are things that if you could share them in this session, that would be great because that way the RML folks have a record that they could help to seed the conversation when uh, talking to the NLM folks. Because I know some of you may have had outreach grants uh, through the RML, and some of you may have been doing uh, demos of some of the clinicaltrials.gov, and if you've had any examples of how any of your users have come back and said that they really appreciated what you had done to make them aware of these services. If I can add to some of uh, what Gail said, um, when I was at the program at National Library of Medicine, one of the things that uh, made a great impression on me was that back in the 80s, when we had the IAMS programs, the Integrated Academic Medical Information Systems at medical centers and the libraries were involved, integration and access to all these sources was a really big thing. Well, today and in the future, I think it's going to be even bigger because all the big data kind of tends to slow down access. And all the different databases, even within the NLM systems, you have to uh, replicate your searches all the time. So one of the things that I suggested was that the NLM Gateway uh, provide access to more of these. I think the NLM had kind of put that system to sleep, but I think it's an important time to look at integration and maybe through the National Network of Libraries allow us to get integrators and link resolvers so that we can go not only to NLM but to other systems to do facilitate searching. When we go, we do the outreach programs, and even with the medical students, they become overwhelmed on having to do all these different searches. So something where they can have all-in-one access is really critical. And then helping us with the libraries to fund um, some of the new technologies and the new equipments like iPads and things like that. Uh, some of the smaller places like ours, we don't have the money to buy all that at one time, but it's a very important to stay current. So that, I think, is important not only for the importance of our library services, but our service to the users, to the public, and to the medical profession. So I put all-in-one and easy access and integration and aggregators and gateway right up on top. Great name. So to follow up, this is Gail, Naomi. I think those are excellent ideas. Well, what do people think of NLM at, or Google at first tried to deal with uh, integrator for health information a while ago. What do you think about NLM being a partner with Google to do one of these big, huge integrations? Oh, I can add to that. You know, Google was a member of the Friends of the National Library of Medicine. They stayed on with us for only about maybe a year or year and a half, and then they got access to the NLM systems, and they sort of dropped out of the Friends. But there is some kind of established relationship already because they get um, the Medline databases, I believe, from the National Library of Medicine. You know, they have the, this system whereby they can let, let vendors, uh, they pay a small fee to get access to the systems. 
and I think Google is one of those players. So reaching, uh, encouraging them to maybe um, come up with some kind of collaborative um, a system would be nice. And actually, so, they don't have to pay a fee at all nowadays. They, only they don't? Pay oh, in the old days you had to. Yeah, well, that, my goodness. Yeah. So they get a bargain to then. Yeah. And they, they charge a lot. They used to have to pay to get access to the Medline tapes. They don't anymore. But I do think a number of years ago, Google did have a program with Medline Plus and was linking to consumer type information um, as well. But it did disappear after a while. So maybe they well, found it wasn't worth their effort. I think the National Network of Libraries and their outreach program are doing a pretty good job with that Medline Plus. So we really push it and go to programs and try to introduce it to the public. So worth getting out. Also, the Medline Plus magazine has helped a lot on that. The Friends of the National Library of Medicine is working on making that as active as possible. So can we hear from any of our audience yeah. members? All you have to do is do star six and voice a, a comment or so. Because we would really like as many people as possible to come to the RFI and let them know what you think of the network and things you value in the network, what w works really well, and what you could see in the future. And you can even send them pie in the sky things. I think they would be interested in that. There's also a link to the RFI in the chat box and also submission instructions with the RFI number. group. I will give one tip on the, this is Naomi again, on the voy voyaging to the future in the six hours. If you want to hear, it works really neat because uh, if you want to hear just maybe one of the speakers down on the bottom, you can go to the arrow and just bring the whole thing over to that particular speaker. You don't have to sit there and listen to the whole thing. Uh, and you can pick up little bits by doing that. So that worked really fast when I was reviewing it the other day. And if you didn't make it to NLM, I really recommend that if you've never been to National Library of Medicine, I really recommend to the whole group at some point in your career, go to see this wonderful place. Pick a better day, though. Ours was wet and windy and cold, <laughs> even though it was in May. At least it wasn't in their winter. I think some people were on the way to the meeting and their planes uh, didn't make it. They got canceled or delayed. Yes, we had some of that from the, the West Coast. We had some problems. It's also interesting to look at the symposium's blog. Uh, at least the last time I looked, there are a lot of comments related to the past um, and not so many for the future. Maybe that's changed now. But it's just sort of interesting to kind of take a walk down memory lane uh, by reading the comments relating to the past. Um, and if I may follow up on that, what was interesting when I was looking just the other day is that the comments for the future tended to focus on the informatics pieces and not as much on some of the things associated with the regional medical library programs and the um, inf the kinds of activities that are associated with consumer health or disaster information. Let me add to that. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Gail, because we really, really, really need to get the librarians in on this. If we don't respond to these things, we're going to be left behind or we're going to be sort of semi-ignored. The informatics people were really strong at that session, and they 
are not bashful about submitting their requests and the things that they want. And um, I think that the lesson for the librarians, that's why I'm trying to push to get more librarians in the Friends of NLM too, because there's only like two of us active librarians on the Friends board. And uh, well, no, there is one additional one. Sheldon Cotson did join when he retired. So we need more voices. And uh, take this as a wonderful opportunity, please. I believe comments will be accepted on the blog through the end of the calendar year, through December 31st. So respond first to the RFI and then to the blog. OK. Kay, have you uh, heard of any chatter through the channels of the regional medical library folks on some potential areas of interest that uh, the RML folks are interested in pursuing? Let's see. Well, unfortunately, we all want more funds so that we can do more in each of our regions. Um, but specific plans. Um, I think with more, I think some of it is with more training or with more access to how the data works, things like that. So. Well, I think Elaine, Elaine Martin was interested in pushing more for like a research librarian role like that to step out and go into the medical centers and help with research. Mm -hmm. So they, they all possibly will put that in. Uh -huh. So like research informaticists. Mm -hmm. I believe that the points of view among the RMLs it, it varies uh, somewhat. So there, there are various uh, points of view about DocLine, for example. Um, different people have different thoughts about possible reorganization of the regions, maybe into instead of eight regions, three regions, or four regions. I I'm not sure that there's, you know, um, a unanimity of thought. I think every, every, the opinions do vary uh, among the RMLs and from person to person. So has there been from this region a groundswell on knowing more about what is big data and how librarians fit into that role? Or as um, Alan had just mentioned, a different organizational structure for the regional medical libraries from into mega centers, it sounds like. I'd be interested in hearing from the audience on the people's reactions to these ideas. Linda Murphy is typing. Maybe we should reach out to our medical library groups like the MLGSA and all those to, to respond. So Linda says she'd like to make a comment about training librarians who conduct systematic reviews. There may be additional opportunities to talk about this at the quintessential meeting in October in Denver. There'll be both a one-hour RML update and also a one-hour NLM update. And the speaker that's going to come from NLM, that's kind of up in the air in, at the moment. And Linda mentioned that she has co-authored with many physicians, and I believe she's referring to the systematic reviews. And Kathleen mentions that MLA is working on a SIG, a special interest group on systematic review. And of course, many of us know they had a um, webcast on systematic review in April. And getting more librarians involved. And of course, there's the Pittsburgh training that is happening this summer and in the fall, which 
we promoted on our listserv. Um, I, Alan, do you remember whether that had any NLM funding associated with it? I don't recall. I'd have to look up my paperwork. I'm not. You mean in terms of helping people attend it, or or just supporting supporting it in general? Supporting it in general. I I'm not sure. I think it's um, the Pittsburgh is is uh, behind it. University of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And yes, somebody mentions Kathleen mentions that at the Quint meeting, I think there's at least two classes having to do with systematic reviews. Oh, and, and Kathleen says, we learned in the systematic review class that this is a term that is being thrown around. And yes, we did hear about that recently, where someone let us know that their physician came to them and said, this is what I want. I want a systematic review. And actually, then they then <laughs> described what they wanted, and it wasn't a systematic review. So, so I can understand <laughs> how there, there is some confusion with that. And just to let you know, um, a couple of people from this region are going to the systematic review training, so we are going to have a midday in the fall that talks about systematic reviews. So that stay tuned for that. Also, in accreditation, one of the things they keep asking for is systematic assessment of libraries. So all this systematic terminology gets kind of confusing. Yeah, I haven't heard of systematic assessment yet. Oh, yeah. It's in the accreditation, the WASP group, the Western Association, they, they ask about it. So we need to define it real well and have a session on that at the Quint. Mm -hmm. And we see a few other people are typing, so we'll give them a second. So Lisa Breton says it would be nice if there was an online course for systematic review, much like the EBP courser. Didn't somebody say that MLA is going to do something on this? They're going to do a SIG, a special interest group. Okay. Of course, sorry. <laughs> I, I should have been able to read that, too. Thanks, Lisa. So we'll see. I mean, that's uh, creating new courses is something that the, the network is very good at. And also, the networks tend to reflect what their geographic area is interested in, too. So that's another hint for the RFI, if you want to respond to it, to talk about what your training needs are and what things you would be interested in. Is there somebody in the... What was that, Naomi? Is there somebody in the special, in the um, medical library groups that would be um, a leader to try to bring information from the groups so when we go to the Quint, there's already a consolidation of some of the ideas that we're going to put forward? Because I really think in our region we should get some of the groups to be prepared when they go there so that we can submit this stuff. I, I really feel strongly that the librarians should 
respond one way or the other and not le get left behind on something. You know, we need equipment, we need integrators, we need education and training. Um, there's a lot going on. It happened, all the changes in technology happen almost immediately. So we need to have the facilities to be able to, and the flexibility to be able to adapt. And this, this is something we need help from NLM. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd like them to restore Gateway, <laughs> reinvent it. <laughs> Sorry, Naomi, I'm not a big fan of the gateway. <laughs> well, but. no, they need to read the idea of the concept was that you could search all these systems, and uh, what we need to do is do a better integration of that. Right. And, and then, also to get to the open access. The Entree system had a way of doing that as well. That could yes, search yes, others. you're right. Various ones, too. Yeah. Hi everyone. This is this is Kelly, and I'd like to also just have you think if you're if you are going to respond to the RFI to be thinking a little bit about the consumers and the patients because with the Affordable Care Act and all of the emphasis on how people are needing to to take part in their own healthcare decisions, I think that we're really kind of facing a change in the way people access information and the needs they have. So. Um, be thinking about what it's like in your own environment and whether or not there's a need for more training or what NLM might do with the, the outreach programs through the RMLs to help the consumers uh, in, in your particular type of setting. Uh, there are also the mobile apps. We haven't talked at all about that. but. NLM has been doing a pretty good job developing mobile apps, and in some cases, they're even going to be pulling back and trying some new new designs. So, just um, think about the consumers too, and we'd love to hear feedback from you on how to reach uh, consumers and the different groups. Thank you. Great, thanks, Kelly. And so we're almost out of time. I do want to remind people. If you registered, you will get an email so that you can get continuing education credit. Next month's midday, which we will be publicizing, we'll focus on stress and possibly some other uh, social media tools. In August, we're planning on doing some things about wearables and apps for one's health. And in September, we're talking about doing bioinformatics with a number of speakers. And also in the fall, we'll be doing systematic reviews. And we're looking into 3D printing as well. So those are some of the things that you'll have to look forward to with Midday at the Oasis. So if we don't have any other uh, questions or comments, and I'll give you a, a second for that we can um, go ahead and end this call. So any final comments from any of our speakers or from any of our audience? Great. Well, I'd like to thank you all for coming, and hopefully we'll see you all next month. Thank you, Kay. Gail, and thank, thank you, Naomi. Thank you, Kay. Thank yeah. you.